listen, there's no announcements in the bulletin, but we need to have some announcements. Yeah, I, it, there's some things that are happening that we have to... Can I do that before the prelude or not? Or would you rather we just skip it completely? Trust me, <laughs> as soon as I start, everybody else is going. Okay, because I think the arts committee doesn't week this week either, right? It meets next week, that's what I'm hearing. You all know that, or right? Okay. Okay. Just do a prayer that I'll make no announcements. I'll make it in the parish house. All right. I'm going to ring the bell and then you guys can do what you want to do. Good morning and happy Easter. I greet you, my family, in the name of God, our mother and father, and of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. On behalf of our community, I would like to welcome all of you, whether you are here in person or joining us online, to the old meeting house. 
The Old Meeting House is an inclusive community that celebrates the uniqueness that is uniquely you. We hope that in the time that we share together, you find yourself surrounded in God's loving embrace. We pray that you're open to receive this blessing, and we pray that God's blessing of unconditional love inspires you to become the person you are called to be. I now invite you to join in a moment of silence before our call to worship. Please join me for our call to worship. Sisters, brothers, siblings all, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Come, experience Christ's peace, hope, joy, and love. Come, fill our hearts with your love. Come, let us worship God together. Please pray with me. Dear God, on this glorious Easter morning, we stand in awe of your goodness and mercy. We invite you to be present among us by the power of your Holy Spirit. You have made the way of love known through your Son, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. We pray that you would reveal this great love to us today as we gather to worship. Lead us by your spirit, and may our hearts overflow with gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray, alleluia, amen. And our acclamation, alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 
please turn to the opening hymn, number 238. Please remain standing and turn in your hymnal to page 700 as we read responsively Psalm 118. For those of you who are new to this, we will play the refrain, sing it, and then I will do the odd verses, you will do the even. In the unlikely event, which actually is a certainty, there's two even verses lined up, you will do that one. <laughs> Oh, give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let all Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. God, out of my strength and my might, God has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The strong hand of God does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of God. God has punished me severely, but God did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to God. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad.
seated. Please notice that in the bulletin are the words to this anthem, and feel free to join in with us as you would like to. First Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord of God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. 
This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This ends the reading. Thank you, choir, for the beautiful music, and Mary, for that wonderful reading. Now's a time in our service where we open it up to the congregation to share their prayers, joys, and concerns. Before I open it up, I would like to offer my two joys to the congregation. One is, I want to thank everybody who made Monday, Thursday such a beautiful, empowering, um, and intimate connection with God. I also want to thank Dave Schilling and all the other leaders who took part in the Good Friday service for a very powerful event. Um, if you haven't experienced it, I really do welcome you all next year to both those services. But thank you to all who participated and provided food and comfort. Are there any prayers, joys, and concerns from the congregation? Selena, can we pass the microphone, please? Hello. Yeah. Um, with all this wonderful amount of people and hearts there throbbing away, trying to make the darkness go away, can we just all sit for a minute and think about the world and its darkness and lift it up? The horrors in Gaza and the places like Ukraine. Just. Pray away whenever way you can, thinking positive thoughts and hope and giving back joy and food, home, houses, whatever. Let us pray for those who are experiencing evil in this world and for those whose hearts need to be touched with love. Mary. I have a joy that my mom is here with me today, all the way from New Hampshire. So please welcome her as you always do, Molly. Welcome home. Um, I have a, a very short witness related to the lilies. Um, so March is a difficult month for me. I suffer from extreme like seasonal affective disorder. And every March, Eric kind of like loves me back to life. Also, both of my parents died in March. So it's just a difficult time that apparently my body remembers every year. Um, and so when we went to get the Easter lilies from Clausen's, I like pretty much for the last two weeks, it's hard for me to like get out of bed or just like function like a normal human being, which is really embarrassing. But I'm sharing this because I suspect others may be having or have had a similar experience. But we went to go get the lilies on Friday from Clausen's, and it was an incredible, beautiful experience where the they had them organized by all the church's names. And I swear, like, every church in central Vermont must have been getting their lilies from Clausen's. And it made me think, at one, it was so beautiful and it smelled so good in there. And then it made me think of that we're not alone. You know, God's always with us. And, and how beautiful that it was that so many other groups of communities in Vermont were coming together and celebrating um, Jesus this weekend. And so I just share that because thank you for allowing us to get the lilies. And in that moment, I thought I wouldn't want to have slept through this. I wouldn't want to have missed it. And so for me, I felt like it was kind of like a, it's going to be okay. You're coming back to life. You know, um, it'll be fine. And so if anyone else is struggling with that, feel free to reach out and talk to me because you're not alone. And Jesus is with us. And thank you for allowing us the opportunity to get the lilies for you all. And know that I that just wanted to share that beauty of, of, of so many people around the state celebrating today in this way. Olivia, I want to sh thank you for being so forthcoming and vulnerable. Uh, what must be a really difficult period for you. And that's a beautiful message that we all need to hear. So thank you for that. Anne? Hi, everybody. Um, 
so I have two prayers today. One, I wanted to pray for the families of the construction crew on the Key Bridge in Maryland. Um, these people went to work to provide for their families and could not have predicted um, that they would lose their lives. So prayers for them and for their families. Um, and prayers for my grandmother, who's been in and out of the hospital for several weeks and was hospitalized again yesterday. Just a lot of questions, not many answers. Um, so she's all the way in Hawaii. We're hoping that we can get out and see her in this time of her life, but it's, it's hard to go from Vermont. So prayers for her that she can stabilize to a point where we can come out and see her. Let us pray for the families of those who lost their loved ones and also for your grandma. Susan, and then Al, Susan and Alan. I'm sorry, I haven't been able to cry yet. <laughs> I just got started, I don't know if I can stop. Um, prayers for the Labarth family as um, we lost our senior member on Thursday. <laughs> and I'm telling you that <laughs> the middle verses of that hymn just got me started crying and I can't stop. Um, especially for um, Jay's wife, Carol, and for his children, um, Leslie and Chip, uh, Leslie and Jules, sorry, doesn't want to be called Chip anymore. Um, yeah, thank you all for your prayers. Um, and blessings on several birthdays coming up this week. Um, my darling sons, who some of you know, and I think there's somebody in the choir who has a birthday coming up on Saturday. I think that would be... <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. We have people online. I discovered, I discovered on, um, in front of the post office at the Peace Vigil, the Jules Rabin that started with his wife, the Peace Vigil, has the same birthday that I do, only he turns 100. I, I'm only 86. But we're, he's going to be outside the Bohemian Bakery on his birthday next Saturday. So if you want to come down and get baked goods and see all of the amazing people that Jules has had in his life, I'll be there too. All right. Happy birthday, David. Alan. This probably should have been an announcement, but uh, Ramin did say to raise concerns. I, I have the honor of setting up for the cafe, which is the first Wednesday of each month. And I looked at the sign-up sheet today, and nobody signed up for anything. So there's soup, salad, a dessert. And please join us at the cafe. And if somebody wants to sign up for that, the sign-up sheet is in the large room on the white table. Thanks. I have a follow-up to that. We have about um, 400 gallons of soup in the fridge that we can use for that. That all you need to do is add the broth. I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town to, um, that Wednesday, but if someone could come in and help do the setup and make the bread. So it, it's a absolutely incredibly t wonderful tasting soup. I, I would like to talk about that more than my sermon today, but <laughs> it's a really good soup. Julia. I'd like prayers for the family of... Bob Tobin, who died on Tuesday night, he was able to be at home with his family around him, especially prayers for his mom, Jerry, and his brothers, Andrew and Bill. Thanks. My condolences on the loss of your friends and family. Laura. Yes, <laughs> um, Laura Brown, and I would like to ask for continued prayers for Susan Weber who is continuing to deal with spontaneous fractures of her vertebrae and is in pain and doesn't seem to 
see an end to this. So prayers for Susan. Thank you. Pray for Susan and her pain management. Goddard. Make this uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically brief. Last, week, last Sunday when you all thought we were playing hooky, Susie and I were at a community event in Woodbury and, and we're, we're, uh, saw yet another instance of the fact that God is always on the job. We ran into one of our friends in the area who we didn't even know was still alive. He has walked eye deep in hell with cancer for years and he drove to this event on his tractor. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Glad you got a chance to visit again with your friend. Remy? Con continued at? prayers okay. for Priscilla. Yeah, continued prayers for Priscilla and her cancer journey. Uh, all this talk of people dying um, out of the blue, a good friend of mine for the last 30 years has died. His name is Chip Hedler, and he was the one of the members of the <coughs> weekly fiddle tune uh, gathering that went around central Vermont with a different house every week. Chip uh, was stand-up guitar player who wanted to call dances. By God, he started at the North, at the Walcott Town Hall. I've been forgetting the microphone. <laughs> so, for, for 20 years, we played a dance at the Walcott Town Hall, sponsored by the Green Mountain School in that town. And that's where I got my stage legs as a contra dance piano player. And thanks to Chip, really, who, who drove that instinct, and we played dances around Central Vermont. It's a great loss, and our group has lost a couple of others in the same time span, the last uh, six months. So uh, as we age, uh, we have to become more comfortable with death. <laughs> as those we've known pass and as we approach our, our own demise. And so prayers for all of, uh, all of the people who have died and for the people who have survived. Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, Carol, is there someone? Uh, prayers for Bruce Chapel, who is going in the hospital tomorrow for a spinal fusion operation. Let's pray for Bruce. If there are no further prayers, joys, or concerns from the congregation, I invite you again to enter a moment of silence before I begin the pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Christ our Lord, you come to us in our sorrow and our pain. You come to us meeting us where we need to be seen, felt, and heard. We are reminded again that in the fragility of life, in the midst of genocide, suffering, hatred, and bigotry, there is joy. There is children's laughter. There is comfort in the sounds of those who bring light and life into this world. We think of those who are suffering, think of those who are passed away, those who are transitioning from one world to the next. We are not always afforded the answers to life's problems, God, but we pray you provide us the ability to give comfort to those who are in need. And in this time of Easter, after a long Lenten journey through over 10 mud seasons. We thank you for helping us realize that in the midst of death, there is life. And in this life, there is beauty, there is connection, there is hope, there is peace and joy. And so what is in this life and with the love in our hearts that we come to you praying out of the depths of our soul and we ask that you hear these prayers.
And now let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray when he said, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward as we take up our offering, or as I like to refer to it as a giving moment. This is a time in the life of our church that we give our time, talent, and treasure, but mostly I ask you to give your love. As you sit here today, you will feel the love of 200 years of this church's ancestors surrounding and embracing you. We pray that you also share this love so that we can give 200 years more to the next generation.
pray. Christ, you taught us how to serve humankind by your words and actions. And so we return our gifts to you that you have provided to us. We ask that you bless them and accept, sanctify them and make them acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and redeemer, we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing our hymn of preparation, hymn number 230, Come, You Faithful, Raise the Strain. Please be seated. Today's gospel reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up <clears throat> in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. 
As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. <clears throat> but she did not know, <clears throat> know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, you have carried him away, and tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Here ends the reading. Mary Magdalene went and announced to her disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. I ask you to pray with me one more time, always one more time. Gracious and everlasting God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, happy Easter. Our Lenten journey that began on Ash Wednesday now ends with Easter Tide's arrival. Our overarching theme for this journey has been on the topic of unbecoming, the letting go of who and what you're not, to realize who you are, more importantly, who you can be. Standing on the cusp of two unique faith journeys, I invite you to join me as we are led into a deeper awareness of our spirituality by two women from lands present and past. Looking back, our faith journey began with a woman who helped us reframe Lent as a transitional period where we navigated the liminal space between life and death, despair, and love. Her name is Suleika Jawad. But as much as she has inspired our Lenten journey, there is another woman who will lead us to Easter and beyond. She is Mary Magdalene, 
and her towering presence within our text has been buried underneath academic and historical rubble for far too long. Together, both women teach us the importance of living each day as if it's, you know, I realize I'm doing it again, I'm getting ahead of myself, so I am going to back up. For those new to her work, Suleika Jawad is a creative artist and writer who was diagnosed with cancer in her early 20s. After a year of chemo, surgery, more chemical injections, she was pronounced cured only to wake up 11 years later and discover her cancer returned with a vengeance. Undeterred by fear or impending death, Suleika has used her cancer journey as a catalyst for transformative change and creative growth. More importantly, she chronicles her story so that others can navigate a path through darkness and discover ways to survive and live in a world of extreme contrast. To say that her work has had an impact on my own spiritual pilgrimage would be an understatement. She has taught me over this Lenten season how to exist and find joy in life's in-between places. You know, mud season. <laughs> For our college students, spring break. Off the beaten path life experiences, Lent, or any time, anywhere, any place, transformational change finds and haunts me. And yet there is something about life in the in-between places that inhibits full acceptance into the world that, is ex that exists outside its walls. More on that later. As someone who finds solace, refuge, and comfort in the, in the synthetic realms formed by words, particularly in creative writing and biblical studies, I find Suleika Jawad's lyrical and economic use of language a refreshing way to experience sacredness within and outside of Christianity. It was she who led me to map our Lenten journey on top of the human condition, to find light and love where there is darkness and despair, inside that liminal space. We learn how to see ourselves not as sinful people, but incomplete strangers to ourselves and others, and to find comfort in life's contradictions. To continue this journey, we first had to alchemize darkness to find the light that exists in its absence. Once we could experience joy within darkness, we had to say goodbye to it, let go, and follow a subluminous path into the light. We landed shortly thereafter in a time and place where our vulnerability was raw and on full display, and yet it was through our vulnerability God reached out to us. In this place, we were permissioned to experience an intimate connection with God, humankind, and our living planet. Still, after all this movement, there was a disquieting silence that made it difficult to practice our faith, at least the way we know it, in a world that distorts its welcoming and inclusive, and inclusive message. It was through Christ's humble and unpretentious giving of himself in service to God, humankind, and our living planet that we ungarbled the deeper truths drowned out by the clanging noise. Each step in our unbecoming held a different theme, a unique meaning found on the other side of life's numerous doors. To find joy amid the bittersweetness of life. To let go, to become visible. To be seen. To be vulnerable. To be strong. To be giving. Today our Lenten journey is over and hopefully we have learned to look more generously on ourselves, our faith, and our relationship with the world as we continue to find new forms love can take. That being said, and I am grateful to Soleika Jawad for her insight along the way, there is still this day, Easter, and what it means. Well, on a basic level, Easter is about life, or new life, or about viewing it through a faith lens that is different from the way you have understood it in the past. And to grow more fully into this day and its meaning, we turn to Mary Magdalene. As we do, hold this question in the back of your mind. If you were given a chance to live your life over again, knowing what you know now, how would you live? Inherent in this question and in Easter is the reality that you are afforded this opportunity, not only today, but every day if you're willing to live each day as if it was your first. With that in mind, let's return to our gospel reading from John. 
In past sermons, I mentioned how John's gospel reads differently than the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Instead of using clever rhetorical devices and parables, John draws from a wide variety of source material and then shares his gospel in the form of a Greek tragedy or drama. Imagine my surprise, and hopefully yours too, when I read this passage and noticed an inclusio that sheds light on a hidden meaning using literary repetition and figurative language. The towering figure in this text is Mary Magdalene, and an inclusio forms around her name. The key to understanding our reading, therefore, isn't found in the actions of Simon Peter, the beloved disciple, presumably John, or even Jesus. It is found in the actions and words of Mary Magdalene. A careful and discerning reader would also notice that every time a woman appears in this gospel, a transformative change takes place in Christ's ministry. That's not a happy coincidence. Who Mary Magdalene is and what role she plays becomes clear when we parse her name. Before doing this, I'm gonna ask you to let go of any preconceived notions that you may have that she was either a prostitute or a sex worker. Mary is short for the Hebrew word Miriam, meaning song of the sea, and is inspired by the first prophetess who led her people from the land of the dead into the land of the living. Her last name, Magdalene, has long been associated with her assumed birthplace, Magdala. The late New Testament scholar, Dr. Esther A. DeBoer, has proven this theory demonstrably false and correctly translates her name as Tower of Faith. Well, if you put one and one together, Mary Magdalene becomes a prophetess of towering faith. It is she who greets us on the threshold of our world and delivers us safely into her narrative space, like a rhythmic tune carried along the wind. Now, you don't need a PhD or any critical reading skills to figure out which interpretation aligns itself with our scripture reading and which one was created by patriarchal leaders to fit a narrative supporting male-dominated religious and political world order. You simply need to be honest and to read this text through an unfiltered lens. Then too is her curious placement within this text. The interaction between her, the disciples, Jesus, the disciples again, and finally, her figurative movement. Mary Magdalene, like a poem, floats into this scene with a vibrancy and urgency unfelt anywhere else in the gospel, only for her to disappear into history and almost forgotten over time. Yet like a poem, she invites us to experience a world her words and movement can create, and only those words and movements, a world that exists on the threshold between death and life. She leads us to Christ's burial, where we peer into the darkness, flee its grasp, and frantically search for who and what was taken. Stepping away from death's shadow, Mary Magdalene takes us on a quest to find Jesus in that liminal space between death and life. There, a light shines beneath the darkness. There, she teaches us to let go of who and what we are not. There, we bury a part of ourselves, the part that was never meant to be. There, after countless tears, here, hers and ours, Jesus emerges out of the shadows. There, in our humility, Jesus sees us and calls our name. There, Mary Magdalene, the prophetess of towering faith, the first to anoint Jesus with oil and recognize his messianic status. Our guide from death to life, from despair to love. Then proclaims to all throughout time, I have seen the Lord. The message couldn't be more clear. One path to God is to replicate Mary Magdalene's faith and her journey. As Easter tide begins, it is usually customary for the minister to offer some closing remarks on Christ's resurrection and what it may mean for you. Well, I'm not an ordinary minister, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I want to try something else. I want to use the lessons learned from Seleka Jawad and Mary Magdalene as a guide to what lies beyond Lent and Easter tide. Both women beckon us to a world that lies just beyond our threshold, beyond darkness, despair, beyond death. To discover it, they only ask for you to live every day as if it's your first. Now, giving credit where credit is due, the turn of the phrase belongs to Seleka Jawad. 
but I also think it has universal appeal for all people seeking momentary glimpses of awe and wonder during life's uncertainties. For Christians, it is a stunningly poetic way of applying Christ's incantatory love in a world crying out in pain. Therefore, I leave you with a prayer. I pray you live every day as if it's your first. May you find joy in all the in-between places. May you discover new ways to introduce ah. compassion into the broken and brokenhearted. And may the deep peace of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God, our Mother and Father, be with you now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> Please enjoy a moment of silence before we sing our closing hymn, and following that, Mary Schmidt will come up and give the benediction. So please don't leave. <laughs> our final hymn is found in your bulletin. It's called The Summons. Please stand and sing. Now on this glorious Easter morning, go with love for each other, <clears throat> with joy in your hearts, hope for the world, and may peace be with you always. Alleluia. Amen.